The second thing that we can have is a new life. What kind of life? Well, I've said that we can ask him in. The first thing is we can have a productive life. Everybody wants to be productive. They want to know that their life has meaning. In Colossians 3 verse 4, we read, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Jesus saying these amazing words over us. We can have a life that is passionate. Passion can be defined as an intense emotion, compelling action, a strong devotion to some object activity or concept. It's the longing of our heart, the vision of our life, the calling that is on us, and it lives in us because it's placed there by God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore uh, I, a prisoner for the Lord of the Lord, beg you to live a life worthy of your calling, For you have been called by God. We can have a life of possibility. A life of possibility. Nothing is impossible for us when we have the life that Jesus offers. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. We have a life of purity. All these are P's. If you're going to make notes or follow this on the internet, all these are P's. Titus 2.14 says, He gave us life, <clears throat> He gave His life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse you, and to make us His very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. A life of purity, a life that's cleansed, a life where you get up every morning, and even if you're humming, Where's my keys? Where's my phone? you know that you're saved. You know that you have a fresh start. You know that your life is transformed. And then we have a life of permanence. It's an evangelist that lived in the 1800s. Some of you would have heard of him. He was based in Chicago, in a place called Northfield in Chicago. His name was D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody, during his lifetime as a preacher, saw two million converts to Christ. This is before the internet. It's before television. It's before email. It's before radio and before electricity. And he saw... Two million converts. He visited the UK in his, uh, twice in his lifetime. It took him three months to get here and three months to get back. And his meetings were always packed. He was an incredible evangelist. And he said this. It's one of my favorite quotes. You might think it's going to be very pithy, but it isn't. He said this. Someday you will read in the papers that D.L. Moody of Northfield is dead. Don't believe a word of it. At that moment, I shall be more alive than I am now. I was born of the flesh in 1837. I was born of the spirit in 1856. That which is born of the flesh may die, but that which is born of the spirit shall live forever. (laughs) That's great, isn't it? Mark Twain said, the the rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated, but but D.L. Moody went further. You see, some of us, very recently went to sleep in the town of Chelmsford. The next day, we woke up in the city of Chelmsford. Didn't we? What had changed? Well, not a lot, actually. But in the truth, that's as we, the truth of when we pass into glory. We go to sleep in this earth, in this realm, but we wake up in the city of God. My friends, our life has a permanence about it because of the resurrection are you all still okay we've got an hour left ah nervous laughter did anyone get easter eggs this morning by the way any children get easter eggs have you finished your easter eggs my children two of them that are home with us this weekend left the house without even demanding their easter eggs parents there is hope Next year, I won't bother buying them one because they're just sitting at home. Where is he? He's up there. He's up there. Okay. 